Good afternoon, Mr. Jyoti. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine, thank you, madam. Very well. And how are okay. you? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for asking, sir. I was just, um, you know, going through a uh, wind wall, and uh, what fascinated me is that you are the only, uh, uh, you know, testing facility uh, or the biggest testing facility in the world. Uh, I don't. I mean, I don't. I won't like to put it that way. But uh, wind wall, the original wind wall in Singapore, our partners. Mm -hmm. uh, they are 30 years old now okay. and they are probably the one of the oldest uh, performance testing laboratories in this part of the world, let's say Middle East and Southeast of Asia, one of the oldest and uh, they have four or five labs in different locations. See, we have their main lab is in Singapore. Mm -hmm. Eventually, they have expanded, have two locations in Malaysia. Okay. And then uh, they have one lab in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. They have a kind of a joint venture in Philippines. And uh, they have a joint venture with us in India. So, they have a like a large uh, spread footprint across southeast of Asia. Excellent. And, so, uh, how, how uh, has been your journey with Vinwall up till now? I would say it's a very, very exciting phase. I mean, for me to have got into this testing uh, uh, zone, testing mm -hmm. area of business uh, at the right time. I would say again, we have just entered into a business which is which is just picking up. In the sense, there was very little awareness about testing, especially facade testing. Right. Uh, uh, with the uh, number of uh, high-rise buildings increasing in India. Yeah. The yes. need for testing also has become uh, more. And a uh, and lot of uh, developers and uh, probably corporates who are building their own uh, pro property, you know, either mm -hmm. as a corporate yeah. office or regional office. Right. Airports, government projects where... Uh, uh, there are certain criteria for government, of course, National Building Code has specified that any project above 2,500 square meters, it recommends testing. So, it is a mandate for the government projects to go in for testing. And uh, when did you wear the director's hat? No, I've been a promoter director in Windwall since from the day one. Oh, uh, in, perfect. Yeah, just uh, that my background earlier was into... Uh, surface finishing of aluminium. So, it's related to the architectural aluminium business. Right. But now, uh, that part of my journey, I've, I've dropped off from that train and <laughs> jumped into a new, new train, so to say, which is going in a very different direction and, uh, and a very exciting direction. Yeah. I mean, I, I, that change also brings excitement. So, it's great that you are, uh, you know, you're doing. So, uh, sir, Please share some of your milestones that you've achieved and also when did you enter the testing industry uh, as, you know, as an individual? See, 2013 uh, is when we commissioned the lab, March of 2000, April of 2013. Okay. And uh, before that, uh, you know, we were in touch with uh, Winwall for about a year or so and all the formalities and building up the infra infrastructure. Uh, from 2013, I would say every project that we are doing is an exciting project. There is everything is new. Every project has a certain nuance which is different from the next. Otherwise, there's no meaning in testing. If you are doing the same thing over and over again, over and over, yes. there is no meaning in doing it. So every project has separate features, a set of separate set of profiles. Uh, different uh, internal, external features uh, which are attached to the facade and the testing requirements are also very different. Okay. So, it's a challenge and it's an ex exciting thing where you can learn new things. So, so why is testing so important and especially, uh, you know, with uh, processed and uh, flowed glass, uh, can you just throw some light on the current trends in this industry also? 
because yeah so like everything else we are in the process of evolving you know we are not a mature market okay you know we are somewhere in between okay like we have mature market like singapore or let's say us where testing per se is a mandate given last 30 years it's been going on okay here uh, since the high rise buildings are also pretty new you know we are talking about high rises coming into india maybe in the early 2000 um, mm-hmm. and then the next decade 2010 to 2020 is when it started really picking up with the onset okay. of the software boom and other things right and so uh, glass as a product as a material is one of the most widely used you know across construction industry for different applications mhm and you take any window any door uh, handrails uh, other than mirrors of course that's a different uh, aspect altogether but and facades facades uh, modern buildings when you say a modern building for you an image will be of a glass building Right. right right no 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 one thinks about a modern building which has got more concrete and less of glass right the aesthetics and the pers- the pers- perspective of the building itself is that most architects de facto take glass as the major uh, part of the building okay right for appearance as of for, the for aesthetics more of glass is used yes see two major reasons uh, everyone discusses everybody in the industry knows it is that glass has a specific uh, uh, characteristic that one it allows light into yeah, the building yeah perfect so if you have a large floor plate mm-hmm. of a modern building which has let's say 50000 square feet per floor and if you have windows fixed on the edges then the quantum of light that comes into the building is very limited say the last the edge 10 per 10 or 15 feet only will get some light natural light the rest mm-hmm. of the building is dark right. and it has to be only artificial lighting right so glass is one product which is as a facade if you have it from the floor to ceiling it extends that natural light further into the building number 1 okay. and at the same time a facade is light it, it's not like a concrete brick wall or a concrete wall so in terms of load on the overall pra- building as a structural load it's much less maybe 1/5 of the brick wall okay wow so it affects the entire design of the structure quantum of steel reduces on that mm-hmm. right number 3 is that glass now with all the modern processes that are available you have different coatings which are given on glass to prevent the radiation from coming inside Okay. So you get only light, but you don't get the heat. Right. It minimizes the quantum of heat. Right. And number four, the acoustics. You have laminated glass. You have insulated glass, which uh, acts as a buffer between the external and the internal environment. Therein, it stops the heat, and it also reduces the quantum of uh, acoustics noise disturbances coming in from the outside into the right. building. right so you have a desired decibel which is ideal for working and your building is right on the main road on a highway hundreds of cars traffic going on even trains then how to stop that noise from coming noise, in noise yeah so glass is a ideal uh, kind of a material to buffer and act and reduce that decibel into the building okay so these are the great uh, advantages of glass now there are couple of very uh, see in glass again there was earlier sheet glass and then that process evolved and became float glass so in float glass you barely see any waves it's very, okay you know it's flat it's a okay. the process is very sophisticated and there are only three or four major manufacturers of that float glass in india all brands global names like asahi or saint gobain right. guardian and now of course you have a company called gold plus uh, many of these are very large installations you, you will be surprised that glass is melted you know from from silica and then it flows like water on a she on a bed of water basically it floats wow. and the length of that uh, process is almost 1 1 and 1/2 kilometers 
So it's a very sophisticated process. So that part of the glass uh, quality, uh, there's a lot of quality control checks in that in that particular business because right. any up and down, any scratch, any dust, any waves means it's not up to the requirement of the specification. So th that has is it mandatory. become mandatory in India also? Yes, yes, it's mandatory that uh, many years ago, uh, float glass has to be ISI marked. Okay. So there is an Indian standard for glass and then ISI uh, uh, has to be, uh, you have to follow the standard and it uh, the glass that you produce must match that standard. Okay. This is one part of the story. So that mm -hmm. glass which comes out from the original manufacturer is a right. annealed glass. It's called annealed. Okay. Which in, what, uh, can you can you repeat that, sir? Annealed, annealed. Okay. A N N E A L E D. Okay. So, in and its annealed format, the glass. If you break it, mm -hmm. you will know. Like if you break a mirror, uh, there are sharp edges. When that breaks into pieces, you can have bigger component, bigger pieces falling out. Right. And it also has very sharp edges. So you cannot use it as it is in a building because of the risks involved. Risks. It's a very sharp edge. Yeah. So if you have, let's say, 20 story building and mm -hmm. if one glass panel breaks, then the sharp edge starts falling down. It's like a bullet. Right. And it's high, it poses a very serious risk to the people on the ground. Right? Okay. So there is a, a specific uh, requirement that the government says and the standards require that these glasses which are used in the buildings mm -hmm. need to be processed further. Okay. So that that the molecular structure of the glass changes. So in the event of it breaking, it doesn't fall in large chunks, but it becomes small crystals. Okay. Not sharp edges, but in more squarish form. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've the, seen the, I've seen those. Yeah. yeah. The pattern of breakage is different. Okay. That is one of the basic requirements and this is called safety glass. Okay. And the process is called toughening or uh, heat strengthening. Okay. So heat strengthening is halfway through and then toughening is the edge end of the process. Then you have heat soaking, which gives certain other properties to the glass. Okay. So now, first of all, government already made a mandate that any float glass manufactured must be ISI because it can go into the architectural business, it can go into the construction, I mean, the construction business or into the automobile business also. Okay. Even cars have glass yeah. wipers. So that's, right. the, that's also the same glass manufactured. But okay. then eventually it gets processed differently for the automobile industry. Right. And it's and not it, as thick as the thick. The, yeah. There is one standard thickness for the automobile. Automobile. It's yeah. a laminated glass for the windshield. Right. It's a safety glass where if you say somebody throws a stone at the windshield, the glass panel will shatter, but it will not break. break and fall in your face. Right. Which was not so 10 years ago. Right. Now it's a mandate and you have to use only laminated glass for the main windshield. Right. So that similarly now the government in 2023 April of 2023 has brought in a gazette notification that every panel of glass, safety glass used in the construction industry mm -hmm. must have this ISI mark. So two things happen. One is that the float glass manufacturer is putting ISI. Mm -hmm. This large sheets of glass which are coming out from the manufacturer goes to the processor and that processor in turn cuts it to the size and then puts it through this their processing plant and mm -hmm. it converts itself into a H, HS that is heat strengthened glass or a toughened glass or a laminated glass or let's say a, a heat insulated, I mean tough, uh, heat soaked glass. All these have to be having an ISI mark after he finishes processing it. Okay. Because it changes some properties during that process. Very interesting and, uh, you know, thank you for explaining the whole thing. Now I understand it all so much better. So one more question I had was, what is NFPA 285 and what value does this test add to the facade industry? I mean, you know, uh, one is aesthetic, 
yeah. of course because yeah so i wanted to understand what kind of value does this uh, of course uh, you've explained safety and all that for, Yeah. So NFPA, that. NFPA is a uh, just just before we go into NFPA, let mm -hmm. me just add one more thing. So this government's mandate that this glass needs to be test, you know, ISI marked. Right. So the processors who are in India need to send their samples to a approved laboratory of the Bureau of Indian Standards. Okay. And get their samples tested. and that laboratory will upload the results of that sample into the online uh, website of the bureau of indian standards and if they are qualifying the requirements mm -hmm. then the bis gives an approval to use the isi mark to the processor therein ensuring that the end product which goes to the construction industry is as per certain requirements okay. in terms of safety or performance uh whatever all the different parameters right, right? so that is coming uh, as far as the glass is concerned now the next part of it the I nfpa 285 is a very different thing what is the biggest risk in a high rise building it's structural one is the building itself should be designed in such a way that as you build it should not collapse yeah it should be able to take the it should be able to take the load come what may right. rain rain storm even if there is a little bit of an earthquake there are buildings designed for movement of earthquake seismic right yeah. but next high biggest risk in a high rise building is fire okay why so no because you have let's say you have a 30 story building or a 50 story building you have fire at the 15th or a 20th story mm -hmm. now people the smoke is started to go up right right now what happens the people above they have to go down right escape, right they have to evacuate safely right now if there is the fire starts to spread faster the fire service will be of little help in that situation because one they don't have access to the building like those days mm -hmm. okay let's say 15 years ago when you have uh, when you had a fire you will see the fire engine rushing right it will reach and then firemen will get out they will start fire yeah roads were broader and yeah, yeah. now they'll spray water from outside and if there are people and those days buildings are not so tall there are five floors or three right. floors right so you put a ladder or you have those hydraulic ladders which will go people can be removed they can be brought down safely and mm -hmm. the firemen go up and spray the water and douse the fire Mm -hmm. Today, the firemen don't have access beyond that five, or uh, let's say twenty meters, which is like five, say six story normally. So they cannot also put their lives at risk by rushing into the building blindly mm -hmm. because they are also as much as risk as the people in the building. Why would they? It, so they need to arrive there, but the whole. focus now is to make the fire building itself fire resistant as resistant as possible so the theory now is that you have to compartmentalize the building into smaller zones and okay. ensure that the fire even if it happens does not spread across the entire floor it is within a given box right and it neither goes to the floor above nor to the floor below okay fire and smoke so if that can be contained it gives adequate time because fire alarms will start working right people right. have free access through the fire escape without panicking they can go down right and the building itself has its own active fire systems the sprinklers which will start spraying water and dousing the fire mm -hmm. okay along with parallelly this is happening but another part of it is the containment of the fire within a given box now when it comes to facade uh, we are we, you may have seen many buildings where you have a large part of the building is having glass but in certain other parts of the building has other material which are used for cladding not granite not granite hmm. modern materials like let's say aluminum composite panel compressed laminates 
uh, you have neolithic tiles all these products are used to clad the building because right. in a high rise building once you clad something you, you you have some you need a surface which doesn't need maintenance for the next 20 years you cannot go up there and paint it every now and then okay so whatever you are using has to have a durability for 25 years so aluminum composite panels or compressed laminates or solid aluminum boards these are these products which are widely used but most commonly used is the aluminum composite panel okay that like earlier the aluminum composite panel when it came in there was very low awareness the buildings also were not too, so tall mm -hmm. so it was indiscriminately used right but one of the risks in the aluminum composite panel is it's it's actually a sandwich panel with mm -hmm. two thin layers of aluminum sheet mm -hmm. and in the middle there is a core which is a linear low density polyethylene it's a okay. polymer and it's a petrochemical product okay which is highly combustible so when you have a fire if it catches on fire in the second floor within matter of 10 minutes if it's a continuous glaive facade then the fire will reach the 30th floor maybe in about 10 15 minutes wow along with it there's a lot of smoke also and if there are any windows in between then the fire smoke can get into that window and if there are any openings or balconies it will be getting into the building through those balconies thereby you are fully aware that the more number of deaths i would say overwhelmingly high percentage of deaths are caused by the inhalation of carbon monoxide fumes yeah. than fire yeah. itself right right the ratio will be something like 90 10 90% of the deaths if the hawkers in a fire accident it's through inhalation of carbon monoxide Okay. Only ten percent of the deaths are actually either burning or people jumping off or falling off or a stampede, that kind of a accident. So, smoke itself starts spreading along with the fire. Okay. Now, later now there are changes. Consultants have started using what is called a fire rated product, a fire rated ACP, which means that LLDPE content reduces and a mineral content in it increases. so bioven that becomes less combustible it's not completely non combustible but less combustible right so there are some classifications as per the european norms like it's b class b b1 or b2 or a1 or a2 now up to b1 is what is allowed so you can use in a high rise a1 a2 or b1 b2 is not suitable because okay. it's a semiconductor combustible and it can spread fire right so most of the consultants have started using b1 or a2 or a1 okay. now a1 is not acp mostly it is solid aluminum panels or zinc or clay tiles or something which is like that say glass reinforced concrete which may be tested for totally non combustibility it doesn't react to fire at all it doesn't it's not affected by fire at all it's a class a1 next is the class b1 which is semi combustible partially it reacts with the fire but not very it doesn't help in spread of the fire so there are three classifications one is the fire resistance itself the next is the quantum of smoke that is generating and third is the droplets when it burns hot droplets start falling from there so that is also a risk for the people who are running in the on the floor right on the outside even firefighters who are there if the droplets fall on them they can get injured very seriously so these are the three things that is measured in a test separately and that product becomes b1 and there is the smoke index also they have a, they have 1 2 3 4 and smoke this droplets also they have 0 1 2 so you get a classification but that is for the specific product only not for the system as such so to fit this product onto the building you need to have a back you need to have a system it will be a aluminum uh, grid with uh, some anchor bolts which are fitted onto the wall right now you know that the strength of any product is to be checked at its weakest link mm -hmm. so we need to test a product as a as a system because the facade is a system now 
anything in the system fails the whole system fails even if one component fails you may have very very good uh, cladding mm -hmm. but the system behind if it is not so fire resistant right. then the fire can eat away burn away or melt that and the whole system will fall down okay so nfpe 285 is a test to test the fire propagation properties of a complete system not the product complete system with all the components which go into it and check whether that ability of the fire is going to the floor above that is 10 feet from the place it's originating and 5 feet on either side of the place that is a let's say it's simulated it's like a building where there is a window the fire happens inside the building and because of the heat the glass bursts it explodes mm -hmm. and the fire comes out so if the fire comes out typically what happens because of the wind from outside the fire starts to leap frog that is a very common phenomena the fire leap frogs from outside and it starts to burn what is outside so if there is a cladding which is combustible semi combustible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then it starts to burn that first and that in turn once it starts burning again leap frogs into the next so it goes into the next so now this test is to check whether the fire which is happening in one floor whether it is able to reach the next floor which is 10 feet above this floor okay so you have a sample which is about 5 meters in height about 5 meters in width say 4.5 in height and 5 meters in width and you have this typical window and you have a fire which is an artificial wire created through a gas burner and to simulate the leap frogging you have another burner placed outside and that starts burning certain amount of gas as specified in the nfpa and for 30 minutes the test is run and we visually check whether the fire is reached 10 feet so there is a marking on either side of the sample okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay so we visually check whether after 30 minutes of exposure whether the fire is burnt beyond 10 feet the damage has is it within 10 feet or above 10 feet if it is crossing the 10 feet mark that means the entire system is not suitable not fit yeah it's not suitable and not safe to be used in the building so this is what you get from an nfpa the system how strong it is not the individual product mm -hmm. so you may use the best of the products but if as a system something else fails then what happens is the whole system without it burning the whole thing can burn because fire once it penetrates behind the acp you have what is called a chimney effect because the air from outside starts to blow in right and whatever little things are there to burn including the acp from the inside starts to burn then the aluminum frame which is holding it starts melting very fast within a matter of 8 10 minutes because 600 degrees aluminum becomes liquid so this is where nfpa plays a very critical role and uh, it's a very serious test when it comes to facades in in terms of cladding right in the in the middle east it's it's a mandate every project every system if there is a small change they say i cannot take a chance you have to do the test and so, prove me so how um, how is it in india is it mandatory in india or as of now it's not mandatory wow. but slowly awareness we are trying to create awareness we are trying to educate of course there are a lot of other bodies like the national building code uh, there are so many associations and all of them are working even the acp manufacturers association is trying to uh, you know improve the level of awareness among the uh, users so that they use safer products for their projects well that's and exactly uh, you know i was just going to say that how informative and uh, how uh, you know you've really in a way educated me uh, all about uh this and i'm whoever will listen to the interview i'm sure will take away lot and lot of value from this sir so i thank you so much uh for this interaction and uh, looking forward to seeing you sometime sir
definitely no. thank you thank you FM, for giving me this opportunity uh through the your medium you know we are able to reach a lot of stakeholders yes and sir. Uh, people who are in very important decision making uh, positions Absolutely. and if they are able to you know get some more inputs like this it will help them make a better decision better and decision the safer exactly. the building gets safer and yeah. possibly saves a lot of human life and the newer the lord that's coming up should be aware of all these things yeah. yes definitely thank you so much sir thank, thank you, you have a wonderful day ahead yeah thanks to wfm also for this opportunity and all the best thank you all the best to you too sir